All right, guys, got the track hawk at the new house. As you can see, they're stuck everywhere. The house is a mess because I'm having some uh, remodeling done on the inside. But the track hawk is going to be here for a while until I figure out what I'm going to do with it or if I get a crazy offer that I can't refuse, it will be sold. Um, once all this is cleaned up, we are going to bring the Viper in here sometime. I'm hoping by next month I should have all this stuff out of here. Uh, but today's video, we are not working on the elephant. The elephant is at the garage already set up to be worked on. And I hope to start on that sometime at the end of this week. But this is a highly recommended video. So let's get into the office and then we'll get started. All right, now we are in my office. Again, we have stuff everywhere because of the remodeling that's being done. So excuse the mess. I don't think I've ever showed you guys my office, but this is where I spend at least 50% of my day every single day. It's where I edit, I pack my orders, reply back to emails, do my auction stuff. But most importantly, I want to show you guys this plaque. Uh, shout out to Sean. He's the one that I built the orange Daytona 300 for, and he had this custom made and shipped out to me. It's um, Hellcat 300, no, well, the Hellcat badge, the Trackhawk, the SRT, and the 300 all engraved into it. But what I like about it the most is my original YouTube logo. This is the same logo that I still have to this very day. I made this logo on my lunch break when I used to work my original job, and um, I was rushing to do it, and I got this done like in five minutes. It's not that. It's like a super cool logo. It's just what is original about my channel. So he had that done and shipped out to me. So shout out to Sean. And we have the YouTube logo over here with a hundred thousand subs. All right, now getting into today's video. This was a highly requested video. Um, people will email me about this. They DM me, they leave comments. I see it all the time. And people are wondering what websites do I use to buy all these cars? They're like the Trackhawks, the SRTs, the donor cars that I'd be buying. And I'm gonna teach you that in today's video. I don't um, sell courses. I don't try to make money off of this. Uh, you guys support me by watching my videos and this is what I'm gonna do for you. But before we start that, I wanna give you guys an update on the website. If you guys don't know and are new to the channel, I have a website. It's uh, calsrt.com and this is where I sell a lot of the stuff that you guys be watching. So we are restocked on the plug and play harnesses. If you guys don't know what that is, if you have a, a V6 charger, an RT, a scat pack, a 392. This is a charger one only. Um, and you want to upgrade to a light up airbag, which looks like this. You can now do that. And I'm, I'm the only person that does this, by the way. You can buy this harness. You can take off your, your, you know, your stock airbag, which looks like this. You would replace the harness with the one that I send you, which looks like that. And you can plug in the airbag, which lights up and the, all those stuff would work just like OEM. If you want to do it yourself, I used to sell a kit where if you want to plug it in and wire up the wires yourself, you could do that. But people were too afraid to splice in wires that they don't know about. So I started selling it as a plug and play. Well, you literally plug in all the wires, how they come in. So you got all these connectors and this was is the most important one. You plug that in and then the airbag will light up, the horn will work and all that stuff will work just like OEM. What's also new is that I sell it as a package now. So before you would have to buy the airbag itself alone, which was 550. And then the harness, which is still on the website for 225. So it's 775. But if you buy it as a bundle, it's only 700 bucks and that includes shipping. So you're saving about a hundred dollars if you buy it as a bundle. Um, it's also, let me show you guys something. I'm also selling these. These are factory uh, 300 airbags and on eBay, these things go for about 300 bucks. I'm selling them for 125. I have six of those in stock. Um, I'm also bringing in a new color. So we do have color changed ones. Uh, I do have red, which is factory. I have green, blue, orange, and white. And next week I am bringing uh, yellow. So next next week you start ordering yellow. I know a lot of people have been requesting that for the ones that have uh, track hawks so they can match their calipers. Um, keys are sold out. I know these went like within the same day. I had about 30 of these. Uh, red keys. I probably have uh, three more of the black ones in stock. So if you guys are interested in those, they're a hundred bucks a piece. These are OEM and they're brand new. Um, and then for Trackhawks and Durangos, I do sell them as a bundle as well. And you can get them in different colors. So you can get blue, red, white, green, or orange. And like I said, starting next week, you can get yellow. So there'd be six color options in there. And this comes with the harness. So you just take off your your factory Jeep wheel airbag or your Dodge airbag, and then you replace it with the parts that I send you. And it'll look just like this once it's done, which you can't go wrong with. This looks so much better than the factory wheel. Uh, what else do we got? I still I still have these in stock. If you guys watched the video where we converted the 300C, the new one, into the new wheel bag, 
and it lights up. This is it right here. I have probably one or two left of those. But getting into today's video, let's uh, switch tabs over here. There are two main websites that you use to buy cars. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's more that are out there, but the two main ones that I use are uh, Copart, which is right there, copart.com. And then the other one that I like to buy off the most is iaai.com. Um, IAA is mostly insurance cars, and we'll get into that later and what that means. Um, but I like to buy off here more than I like to buy off here, but there's always, uh, of course, you know, different options that you can pick from. But on Copart, so let's give you guys an idea. You could go on here, search Trackhawk, hit enter, and it shows you all the Trackhawks that they have for sale. So I like to filter it by sell date. So if you hit sell date, it'll tell you all the ones that are selling now, okay? Um, I'm gonna use this one as an example, and I'll tell you here why in a second and why I don't like to use Copart, but this one here is a 2021 Trackhawk, and it gives you all the information over here. It tells you the VIN number, the lot number, the miles. And next to the miles on each of them, we'll say actual if they're actual miles. And if they're not actual, it will have something like this. Oops, wrong tab. We'll say something like this, not actual. Obviously not actual miles means whatever is on here. They're even been, they're, they're possibly rolled back. So it probably has more miles or there was an error at some point. So that's why it's a good idea to run a car fax on them and just to double check that odometer before you buy it. But if it says actual, then it's more likely actual. So let's go back to the one I was talking about and we'll focus on this one for a second. But just like Copart, you can go on IEA and do the same thing. You can search for Trackhawks if that's what you want to buy. And just, oh, that's wrong. We're not looking for Nissans. Let's do Trackhawk. All right, there we go. So they have only one that's going for sale. And this one is on September 5th. The other ones will say not assigned just because they're probably waiting for a title from the insurance company. But I would say 90% of IAA cars are insurance. So if you click on here, and this is why I like IAA. So this one's a 2021. It has 10,000 miles. If you scroll down, see where it says seller? If the seller is blank, that means a dealer is selling the car. And what that, that means is, let me show you guys another one. Let's say if we're looking at this one, the seller is blanked out because I'm not logged into my broker account, but it'll tell you who the seller is. It could be like progressive. It could be like state farm insurance. And most of the time it's called insurance out of auction because insurance are selling these cars. But if you see it with nothing on there, which is like this, then more than likely a dealer is selling the car. Now, why is it an issue if a dealer is selling a car? This one here is a dealer car. I know that for a fact because um, I ran a car fax on this and it came back as a, it shows you like it was sold at an auto auction, a dealer took possession of it and then they took it back to the auction. And now the issue is, so you're looking at this car and you're like, oh, it's not bad. It needs a quarter panel, it needs a door. I was honestly buying this for um, a parts car because I want to do that new Grand Cherokee conversion. But I was looking at this, it looks good, has 11,000 miles. And then if you see the R and the, you know, right by the name, that means it's a run and drive. That's what that means. Um, so it looks fine. The airbags were not deployed. It has a nice uh, carbon fiber uh, steering wheel as well. But, but now look at this. So this is how it looks, right? Now this is a dealer car, remember that. If I take this VIN, and this is another very, very important information that I'm giving you guys. So what you do is you take the VIN, copy it, go on Google, paste it, and hit enter, and watch what you see. See that? This is the same truck. Let it load up for a second. This truck, and I'll even tell you, like some websites will tell you how much it's sold for, but this truck over here looked like this. Okay. Even has a biohazard sticker on there, so probably someone got shot in there. Um, looks like this at one point. I'll even tell you the date. So let's tell you guys when this thing got sold. I don't know what kind of language that is. This thing got sold. Uh, it doesn't tell you, but it was sold out of Detroit, so at least we know that. So it was sold local. Um, and now it's being sold in New York. 
So a dealer bought this truck, made it look better, right? They put two clean doors on it. They replaced the fender and painted it to make it look like the damage isn't as bad as it seems, right? So you can even see here, they kind of just um, rigged it up. And then they put it back at auction to sell it and try to make more money off of it, looking like this, right? So if you didn't, if you didn't know this information, somebody would have bought this truck think of that I need just a quarter and I guarantee you under these doors it looks terrible because they don't care of how it looks you know underneath they just want to sell it and make a quick profit on it so you could have got screwed real bad buying this truck um, but that's that's what you want to look out for if you have a Carfax account or have a way that somebody can run a report for you then you, you always want to do that with these Copark trucks but you can look at anything man so that's Trackhawk you could do Red Eye And then you'll see a bunch of red eyes. Again, I like to filter it by which one is selling first. So you have some challengers and then you can edit by if you want like a charger. Well, now they only have challengers. So that's what that tells you. But look, this one is selling soon. I don't think this is even repairable. Well, maybe you can, you can probably fix that. Looks like it took a nice hit. Right over there. So the process of doing this is you cannot buy a car without having a license. So I deal with a broker. It's actually a friend of mine that owns a, um, a used car lot. So I use his license to buy these cars. Eventually, if not in today's video, because there's a lot of cover, I'll make another video on how you can use my license and go on my website and I can buy the car for you using my broker license. And then there will be a fee associated with that, which we'll, you know, we'll discuss once that time comes. But showing you guys here, let's show you guys a different one. Let's do red eyes on here. Red eye. And see, they have a, a red eye charger going for sale. If you click on that, if it has a seller, which is, you know, that's blanked out because I can't see it. I'm not logged into my buyer account. That means an insurance is selling the car. You know, obviously the car got into a total. They totaled it out. And then now they're selling it the way it is. This one's pretty nice at 7,000 miles. And um, what's cool by IAA, they, they show you a video of the engine running so you can listen to the motor to make sure it's healthy. That doesn't sound too healthy. Yeah, that doesn't sound the greatest, but you get the idea. Copart doesn't do that, IAA does. Um, IAA also gives you a 360 view of the car, which is pretty cool. And then you can also see the inside as a 360. This is why I like dealing with them. You can see a lot of the stuff because most of the time you're buying a car that's not local to you. So this car here is in Indiana. Instead of driving all the way to Indiana, which is this address over here, I could um, get you know the best look I can off these pictures. Which this one doesn't look bad. It looks like even the frame rail looks straight. They mark them for you. So the insurance company will mark the damages. That's what that green mark is. This one looks like it needs a headlight, bumper cover. The hood looks fine. But you always gotta expect the worst. If this hood comes in, you gotta replace it. That's, that's probably a thousand bucks from the dealer. So once you buy this, um, let me see if there's a calculator on here. Let me show you guys something. I'll move the camera away for a second. Just to give you guys an idea on how much it would cost to uh, to buy one of these. Yeah, it's not letting me do it. I got it because I use my broker account off my um, off my laptop. But you get the point, you can you can look up anything that you want on there. You know, if you're looking for SRTs, you can look up SRTs. If you're looking for a regular, you know, Jeep, you can look up a regular Jeep. Um, and they have auctions every single day. So if you go live auctions, there's, there's auctions all over the country. This one's in Ohio, New York, Georgia, New Jersey, and then you can go through them one by one. I'm in Detroit. Detroit here sells every Thursday. So you go Thursday and then you'll go to, did I even put it on there? I don't know what's not changing, but every Thursday is we have Detroit auction. Oh, right here, Detroit. And then you can look at the September 7th listing, which is in three days. And these are the cards that are selling. So you, you want to start by looking at the ones that are closer to you and then go out. And if you want to have it transported, you can. They do offer transportation codes on here, but they're ridiculously expensive. 
Let me see if it'll show you one on here. Unless they got rid of it. But sometimes it'll tell you, like, put in your zip code, and it'll tell you it'll cost you that much money to have it transported to you. I have a dispatcher that I use, and he, you know, puts it on his dispatch, and I have people pick it up at, um, at a fraction of the cost. Also, they sometimes have it with a buy now option. So this one over here, whatever this thing is, is Audi Q5. The auction here is in three days. So today's the fourth, the auction's on the seventh. But the insurance, which this one's an insurance, they have it as a buy it now price. So you can buy it now for $63.50, or you can bid, right now it's at $2,050. You can bid up to what you want um, until the day of the auction, and then they remove the buy it now price, and then you'll just buy it for whatever it goes for. Sometimes it can, this could can be tricky because sometimes you'll get it for under what they're asking at $63.50, and sometimes a day of auction will go more than that current bid. So it's like, it's like a weird situation sometimes, but if the insurance still doesn't want to sell it because they have reserves on them, then um, they'll put it back by now and then they'll keep repeating it until they get the price that they want. But um, the last thing that I want to cover, I'm not even sure if I covered everything. If you guys have more questions, make sure to leave a comment and we'll go over it next video. There's different titles that you could buy. Clean title means it's a clean title. That means you don't have to inspect it once you buy it. And we'll talk about inspections here in a minute. If you buy, let me show you guys this. Come on. This one over here is a scrap title. Scrap title means it's good for parts. Uh, I mean, most of the time you'll see a scrap title on something that's been stripped or something that's been hit way too hard that's not fixable. It's a scrap title and scrap title, you cannot resell it. You can only use it for parts. And then you have something like this. Let me show you guys a salvage one. I think this one over here is salvage. No, not that. I'm not sure why these aren't showing titles. Let's look at this one over here. Okay. So you could look at one of these. This one has a TH. What does that mean? That one's salvage. So in Pennsylvania, each state will have its different code. So Pennsylvania will say PA and they'll say certificate of salvage and I'll tell you the reason. So this one over here is theft, which I'm surprised most of the time when they're stripped down like this, um, I'm not sure how they expect you guys to fix this, but this one here is a salvage. So if you put this back together, if you get the motor, the interior, the suspension and everything that needs to be done to get this car back to run and drive, they will issue a rebuild title. A rebuild title is once you get this car back up to shape, you know, whatever it needs, you have to get it fixed. Um, there's a salvage inspector in each state. You'll have to um, schedule an appointment with that inspector. The inspector will come out. He'll check all your receipts. You have to have receipts for all the parts. So if you buy a door from a, you know, a junkyard, you make sure you got to save that receipt. So when it comes time for inspection, the inspector will look at that receipt just to make sure that door isn't stolen. Uh, most common is the, the transmission, the engine, you have to have um, matching, you know, receipts for that. So if an inspector comes out, he can verify where that engine came from, where that transmission came from. But once you get that done, the inspector will come out, he'll pass it, he'll recertify it as a rebuilt salvage. So it won't be a salvage anymore, it'll be a rebuilt. And then that's how you sell it. That's why if you guys are on like Marketplace or sometimes you'll see this on eBay, if a car has a rebuilt title, that's what that means. It's been purchased at an auto auction, it's been rebuilt, and then it's ready for sale now. But that's most of the stuff. I think that's most of the important stuff that I covered um, on dealing with these two auctions. Like I said, personally, I like to deal with IEA a lot better than dealing with Copart just because they, they're they more, um, I would say, honest. So they'll tell you, you know, they'll show you a video of their engine running just so you can tell if the engine's healthy or not. They tell you who the seller is. So if it doesn't have a, a name over here, that means most likely it's a dealer. And then you see what dealers do. And a lot of times people get scammed with that. And then you buy something thinking that it has no damage and it looks like this before. Um, but here is a, a breakdown of a car. I don't know. I'm not sure what car this was, but this was the, the buy price of it. It was 61000 This is what they charge you to buy it. This is not the broker fee. This is what the auction charges you. So that's Copart. They charged me thirty six sixty as a buyer fee. Virtual bid fee just means that you're bidding online. They charged me 150 bucks for that. Um, the gate fee, that's just for the, the high low driver to take the truck off their lot and take it outside. They charge you $80 for that. They charge you $20 to mail the title. 
and they charge you $20 to make the payment at the auction. This is just all fees that you're paying to them. So 61,000 is what I bought the truck for. Let me give you guys a quick math. 61,000 is what I bought it for. I paid auction 64,938, 60, let's do that again, 64,938. So I paid them almost $4,000 in fees just to buy the truck. This is what they're charging me to use their website to buy these cars off their auction. So every price is different. So if you buy a car for 3,000, they might charge you like 300 bucks, 400 bucks as a buyer fee. There's a, there's a percentage that they charge you on the, the final sale price. I'm not sure what that percentage is, but the, obviously the higher that you go, the more the buyer fee is. Um, I'm pretty sure the virtual bid fee, the gate fee, the mail for the title and all the other stuff stays the same. The only thing that will charge the change is the buyer fee. But like I said, the more that you go, the higher that price is. Um, and the same thing goes for IAA. I don't have an invoice on hand, so I cannot show you, but it's about the same thing. And this is um, depending on who you use as a broker, the broker will charge you also a, a broker fee to, to use their license to buy off their auction. So there's two different fees that you're paying. You're paying them, plus you're paying your broker. I pay my broker percentage, which I don't disclose because me and I have been doing business for a long time. But um, you could use a lot of different brokers. Um, the main one that I know about is uh, Auto Broker. We'll do salvage, salvage, auto broker. The biggest one on there is gonna be, I'm trying to give you guys a, you know, a reliable one. Let's look at auto broker auction. Rare Auto Bidmaster is what it's called. So Auto Bidmaster, I think they're partnered with Copart, so you can use them. But you'll sign up right over there, you'll register or whatever, and then you can start bidding. But I think you have to give them a deposit, and then they'll charge you a fee to use their, their broker license to buy the car. Eventually, I will get into this. I will start using my license to help you guys get into these, you know, buying cars and selling cars. But I hope I covered a lot of the the main stuff that you need to know about this stuff. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to cover it on the next video. But like I said, two main websites that we use and a lot of people use are uh, Copart. The second one is IAA, which is right over here. And you can make, you know, if uh, if you find a Trackhawk online for 70 or 80,000, you could buy it from auction for a lot cheaper, put it back together and save at least 15, 20 grand just because uh, not a lot of people know about this. So I'm putting you guys on free game, man, literally. Um, this is how I do it, and you can start doing it too. You just have to put some money together so you can start buying cars. And like I said, they have a wide variety of cars. This is not um, sponsored by any of these two websites. I'm just telling you how to do this. But um, go ahead and check them out. Uh, Copart is one, IA is another one. If you guys have any questions down below, if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave a comment down below. Uh, stay tuned for next video where we tear apart the 300 to figure out what that noise was. And um, let me know if you guys have any questions. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe. Check out the website. This stuff sells out pretty quick. I'm pretty sure by the time I dropped this video, a lot of this stuff has been sold out. These, uh, these harnesses have been gone for a minute. They literally just got back in last week. Uh, subscribe if you're new, man. Hit that like button. And I will see you back on the next one.